Well, hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are gonna love this one because in this episode, we've upgraded the quality. That's right, we actually went out and we bought a new camera. Now the other one will still be used as a backup camera and as a alternate angle camera, but this one you're viewing on will be the, uh, the future for MI Gardener. I hope you all enjoy it. If you do, give it a thumbs up. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring you all outside. As you can see, all the snow has melted and I'm so excited about that. But I wanted to show you all kind of some things that happened uh, when the snow melted that really surprised me that I wanted to show you all, as well as answer some questions about maple tapping that came up in our last video. I hope you all enjoyed that video, by the way. It was not using this camera. It was actually using that, the old camera. So I just wanted to test out its capabilities to really show myself that I could, in fact, make a, a very aesthetically pleasing video without upgrading the camera so that when I did upgrade the camera, I didn't feel like I was really throwing it out, that I was really making a wise investment to myself. So I'm always pushing myself as a video creator to show you all kind of what's possible in a garden, as well as bring out the, the aspects of nature that you might just walk by on a day-to-day -day basis and really take for granted. And that's what I wanna do this year more often is I wanna show you all kind of the things that, that you might take for granted, um, the simpler things in life. And I really wanna kind of dial things back to a more, um, to a more basic level of really showing you all uh, kind of the, the ongoings of a garden without so much narration. Now we will have regular videos like we always do, but because we're going daily again, starting very, very soon, probably the 1st of April or so, we're gonna start going daily. Once we start seeds, um, it's gonna be, I mean, we're gonna have so much content that I wanna be able to mix it up and break it up a little bit, and I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, I wanna show you all something that uh, happened when the snow melted that I was so shocked by because not only have we had negative 18 degree weather for about, well, we had negative 18 degree weather for about two weeks straight, which was a record breaker for here in Michigan, but it's also been one of the snowiest seasons on record, uh, well, in the past decade. So it's been about 10 years since we've had this much snow and as you can see, it's all gone now. So uh, I wanted to show you all what I saw when the snow melted because I was shocked at what I saw. So let's go check it out. So what you're looking at is lettuce that is self-seeded from a lettuce plant that I threw over here last year, and I had no idea that it had germinated, and lo and behold, to my amazement, it sprouted sometime in the, in the fall. It went all the way through the snow and through the, the terribly cold weather and is actually regrowing now that all of the snow has melted and it can access the sun again. I am just absolutely blown away by the power of nature and it's and you know and it's uh it's ability to survive i just really i threw this over here just to kind of compost some of our green material where our raspberries are and uh, kind of give them a little bit of um just a little bit of fresh organic matter and then this popped up i think oftentimes as gardeners we have the mentality that the things we're putting in our garden are kind of weak and feeble compared to the more native hardier plants and weeds that are out there but it just goes to show that there's a lot of things that we plant in the garden that can in fact not only take very cold weather but can actually outcompete a lot of the weeds you know i don't see a whole lot of weeds growing but those lettuce they're growing and they're actually thriving so i'm really impressed by that and i definitely think it's always a good reminder to remind yourself that um, you know not everything you're growing has to be tore out at the end of the year not everything has to um, be seeded by yourself let nature do what it does best and sometimes it's a not only a pleasant surprise but it also can be uh, a little a little bit more of a carefree garden um, if that is something that you're looking for. So we're here with our bucket set up and we have two buckets per tree, three trees total, making a, a total of six buckets. And we've had a lot of questions about this system here and kind of what it is and, and why, why we switched from, uh, why we switched to this method from the blue tubes. The blue tubing method is great. By, by no means am I bashing it. In fact, we actually have it, have them for sale over at mygardener.com because they're very inexpensive to get into maple tapping. But for me, I've always wanted to kind of go back to, uh, I, my, Mrs. Emma Gardner calls me the Renaissance man. You know, I am kind of, I'm kind of that, that romantic that likes to go back to uh, a simpler time. And so as I talked about earlier in this video, I wanna get, I kinda wanna bring that back. And I wanna show people kind of the, the older methods and the older styles this year and really show the simplicity of things because um, I think so often as a society, we are 
kind of passing off the past and welcoming the future with open arms and assuming it's going to be better, it's going to be brighter, it's going to be more efficient. And, and we really have a tendency to just uh, you know, push that, that past away. And I think it's such a shame because you see it happening with crafts like blacksmithing or even things like gardening nowadays or uh, or heirlooms, for heaven's sakes. Heirloom varieties, we've talked all the time about how newer hybrids are kind of pushing the heirlooms away and, and they're becoming lost and extinct. And when you lose things, folks, they're lost forever. You know, you have these, you have these kind of renaissance uh, occurrences every once in a while. And I think it's so, uh, it's so beneficial to see those renaissance. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do is I'm kind of trying to um, bring about a little renaissance on my channel where we kind of every once in a while show the simplicity of things. And that's really what this maple tapping series was about, is showing the simplicity of maple tapping, uh, how it was done for decades before uh, you know, the plastics came about, which are definitely cheaper, uh, as we'll get into. But also, you know, they're just they're um, they're very timeless. I think they just look really neat um, on the tree here. And so, uh, so let's get into the cost here. So that was one of the big things. How much did this cost? So each one of these setups here uh, was was broken down into the the cover, which I bought separately. This is a, a pre-made cover that uh, slides right on the bucket, so it's got these little grooves. It's got these little grooves there, and those grooves slide onto the rim of the bucket. These were about five bucks a piece. I got them used, um, so they're a little more expensive if you get them brand new. Um, with all this stuff though, if you can find it used, get it used. It doesn't ever go bad. Um, and it's all food grade too. So uh, this is uh, an aluminum bucket. This was the most expensive component. This was about $15, and this was also used. So they're, I think, about $20 brand new. So pretty expensive, but they will last a lifetime, which is cool. Um, the spiles here, the spiles are metal as well as the hook. The hook is also metal there. And um, the spiles were about $2 and the hooks were about $1.50. So, you know, um, you do the math, but I mean, it's all in all, it's about roughly about $22, $23 per, uh, per setup. And uh, you know, it's just a, it's a really timeless thing that that I think is going to be a cool addition to the channel. Um, another thing that came up with the maple tapping was, um, you know, uh, how many taps can you put in per tree? This is a really common question that comes up, and it's one that I definitely want to answer in more detail. So we will be answering this again in an upcoming video, but. Um, the basically, the reason why we put two taps per tree is because this tree only has a diameter of about 25 inches. At, at 27 inches in diameter, you can move up to three taps. So it's not quite large enough to do three taps. Um, and, and I really don't think I'll ever do three taps in here just because the more taps you put in a tree, the, the greater a chance of, of you killing the tree. And I just want these uh, trees to I want to take some of their sap, but leave most of it to uh, to flower or to leaf production, which um, is what the sap is actually going to do. Um, and the sap is kind of on its way up, and so we're we're kind of just taking a little bit, you know, as it, as on its way up to the leaves there as it goes up. So that is that. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I hope you um, have uh, learned something new from this episode. And I really do hope that you are enjoying the quality. If you did, give, it a video, give this video a thumbs up and post in the comments box below any questions that you have. And I cannot wait to come out with more exciting uh, content and gardening information for you all to help you grow better, help you have uh, more success in the garden and have more fun doing it. So as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.